and welcome to another slice of Daily Bread. I'm so glad that you have joined us today. Today's devotional will be brought to us by Pastor Stephen Farr. Pastor Stephen, as always, welcome back to Daily Bread. I'm excited to be here, Lil. All right, now before we begin, let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for your love towards each one of us and we're grateful for the truths that are contained in your word. And Lord, I pray that as we open and study here today on Daily Bread, that your spirit will be our guide. We thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, welcome, and I'm glad that you have decided to join us today for another slice of Daily Bread. Making the decision to spend time in God's word every day is one of the most important decisions we can make. The Bible tells us that as we spend time reading God's word, that we are changed from glory to glory to be more and more like Jesus. Today's devotional is titled, His Kingdom Come. These words are a part of the Lord's Prayer found in Matthew chapter 6. As followers of Jesus, we should follow his example of submission to God the Father. Each day as we open God's word, we need to be praying for the Holy Spirit to reveal to us the heart of God through his word. When the disciples asked Jesus to teach them to pray, he revealed through the prayer he taught them that his life's goal was to do the will of his Father in heaven. We see the words of the Lord's Prayer that I am referring to in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10. Let's go ahead and look at that together. It says in Matthew 6 verse 10, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Here Jesus is teaching us, his disciples, that when we pray, we should be praying for God's kingdom to come and his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. It isn't easy to surrender to God and his plan for our lives. There are many times in our lives when we feel as if we want things that really wouldn't be the best for us. We think what we are asking God for will make us happy. This prayer that Jesus teaches us through his word reminds us that we need to trust God, our creator, that his will for our lives is really the best. This prayer also opens our eyes to a reality that we may not always realize is being indicated. As we live life in this world, we are living in a world where there is more than one kingdom. One might think I am now going to say that there are hundreds of kingdoms, but scripture only ultimately reveals two different kingdoms, God's kingdom and Satan's. These kingdoms are not built with lumber and stone, but instead these kingdoms are made up of those who choose to follow God and those who follow the influence of the devil. You may be thinking, Pastor Farr, where do you see what you're saying in the Bible? One of the clearest examples of the truth I am sharing with you today is found in the Old Testament in the book of Genesis. When we read the stories found in the Old Testament, it is easy to get confused. This is the reason we need to pray for the Holy Spirit to give us understanding when we open God's word. We might think we are the only ones who have a hard time understanding the Old Testament, but that isn't so. Ever since sin came into our world, mankind has struggled to understand God's word. The Bible tells us that, that even the people who were alive during the Old Testament times struggled to understand what God was trying to communicate to them through his words. Baffling, isn't it? These people were often a part of the stories we now read. They heard God's words firsthand through people like Noah and Moses and others who shared God's word in those times, and they often didn't understand what Noah, Moses, and others were trying to tell them. The Apostle Paul speaks of this in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 14 through 18. This passage, passage helps us to understand why we struggle to understand God's word still in today's world. 
Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 14 through 18. But their minds were blinded, for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Here we see Scripture confirming that if we are going to understand God's Word, especially the Old Testament, we are going to need God's help. We can pray and ask God to give us the Holy Spirit. And as we prayerfully open God's Word, He will open the eyes of our hearts and give us understanding. If you pray and ask God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, He will gladly give you this wonderful gift. But don't take my word for it. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, and verse 13, tells us that God will give the gift of the Holy Spirit to those who ask. Let's take a look at that text. In Luke 11, 13, it says, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Before we dive into the Old Testament story that I want to share with you today, let's test God's promise and take a moment to pray and ask for the Holy Spirit to open our hearts and minds and give us understanding. We can pray a simple prayer like this. Heavenly Father, as I open your word today, open the eyes of my heart and my mind to help me to understand what it is that you are trying to communicate to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, a simple prayer like this gives us the opportunity to claim by faith the promise of God to give the Holy Spirit to those who ask for it so that we can understand what he's trying to communicate to us. In the book of Genesis, we see many stories which help us to see that there are ultimately only two kingdoms in our world, God's kingdom and Satan's. Or perhaps better said, in our world, there are those who choose to give their lives to God and worship him. And then there are those who choose to follow Satan and his influence. Satan wants us to aspire to be like God and to choose what is good and evil for ourselves rather than listening to God's word. One of the stories that demonstrates this truth is found in Genesis chapter 9, verses 18 through 27. Here we find the story of Noah and his sons. This story takes place right after the flood. Noah had built an ark and spent 120 years preaching and asking the people of the world to repent and give their lives back to God. He invited them to join him and his family and his son's families on the ark in order to be saved from a great flood which would soon come to bring judgment upon the world full of wicked people who had chosen to follow Satan rather than God. Sadly, only Noah and his family and his sons and their families got on the ark. The story picks up when the waters of the flood dry up and Noah and his sons and their families leave the ark in Genesis chapter 9, verses 18 through 27. Let's take a look at this story together. It says, starting in Genesis chapter 9, verse 18, Now the sons of Noah who went out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Ham was the father of Canaan. These three were the sons of Noah, and from these the whole earth was populated. And Noah began to be a farmer, and he planted a vineyard. Then he drank of the wine and was drunk and became uncovered in his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it on both their shoulders, and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned away, and they did not see their father's nakedness. 
So Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done to him. Then he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants he shall be to his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. May God enlarge Japheth, and may he dwell in the tents of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. I chose this story for two reasons. The first reason I chose the story is that it is a story that is often misinterpreted. Many people read it and conclude that Ham was cursed by Noah. They conclude that Ham's sin had caused him to be cursed and that from this point forward, him and his descendants' futures were fixed as servants to the other two brothers. And worse, some, some conclude that Ham's destiny was now fixed as lost while his brothers were saved and considered part of God's kingdom. This is only one of the stories in the Bible used to try to claim that the Old Testament teaches a theology of predestination, that some people are born into this world to be lost and others are born to be blessed and saved. But this simply isn't what the Bible is teaching. The second reason I chose this story is simple. This story reveals a sad truth about life in this world after sin came into it. Each person is faced with a choice. They can choose God and his kingdom, or they can choose irreverence for God and ultimately end up choosing the devil and his kingdom. We know which kingdom people have chosen through the fruits displayed in their characters. Shem and Japheth showed reverence for their father, and this reverence revealed a reverence for God, and also that Shem and Japheth trusted in God's promises. In Psalms 144.15, it says, Happy are the people who are in such a state. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. The actions of Shem and Japheth revealed that they trusted in God and his promises. Let's look what it says in Deuteronomy 7, verse 9. Therefore, know that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. Ham's irreverence, on the other hand, for his father was only a fruit of of his character as well. The prophecy of Noah was no arbitrary denunciation of wrath or declaration of favor. It did not fix the character and destiny of his sons, but it showed what would be the result of the course of their life had they chosen to continue down the path which had led to the character which they had already developed. It was an expression of God's purpose toward them and their descendants in view of their own character and conduct. As a rule, children inherit the dispositions of their parents and imitate their example so that the sins of the parents are practiced by the children from generation to generation. Thus, the vileness and irreverence of Ham were reproduced in his descendants bringing a curse upon them for many generations. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 18, it says, One sinner destroyeth much good. Now, many people living in the world today claim that good and evil is only a matter of preference. They claim that the decisions they make only affect them. However, through the story we have looked at together today, we see that our decisions as to whether we will choose God in his kingdom or to say no to God end up resulting in us being in the devil's camp rather than God's camp. Yes, we see that whether we will choose God in his kingdom or say no to God and as a result end up in the devil's camp affects more than just us. Our decisions affect everyone that we come into contact with. In conclusion, I want to leave you with two thoughts. One, if you haven't chosen God in his kingdom yet, it isn't too 
late. If you have made mistakes and you can see the fruit of your life is bearing things that you don't want it to, if you can see that the fruit of your life is, is making it appear that you are in the enemy's camp rather than God, don't believe the lie of the enemy that your fate is sealed. It is not too late for you to repent. It is not too late for you to give your life to God. Contrary the teachings of some, contrary to the teachings of some, there aren't any people living on the earth today, nor have there ever been people God created predestined for destruction. The second thought I want to leave you with is this. What you choose is not only a matter of preference. Do not believe the lie that your decisions only affect you. The decisions we make about which kingdom we will be a part of has an effect on everyone our lives ever touch. Today in closing, I want to invite you to say the Lord's Prayer with me. You might be deciding for the first time to give your life to God. This might be the first time you are making the decision that you want to choose to be a part of His kingdom come and His will be done on earth. Others that are listening to this devotional thought might have made the decision to follow Jesus long ago. It is possible you have been a part of the church your entire life. I want to invite both groups of people to join me in committing your lives together with me today to God and His kingdom. Let's go ahead and pray the Lord's Prayer together that can be found in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. Jesus said, In this manner, therefore pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Pastor Stephen, thank you so much for sharing today's devotional. It's my honor as always to share God's word and I hope it was a blessing. We want to thank you for joining us as well. You know, here at Daily Bread, we do like to leave you with a promise that comes from God's Word. And today's promise comes to us from Psalm 16 and verse number 11. It says, Thou wilt show me the path of life. What a wonderful promise, friend, to know that God's going to share and show each one of us the path of life. And I encourage you to choose God's kingdom today. Pick up God's word, spend some time reading and studying its sacred pages. Thank you so much for joining us for Daily Bread today. I hope you are blessed and I hope to see you again tomorrow. Until then, so long. Mm -hmm.